Here we are again with Dr. Liz Lister, where John Coleman and I are going to explore all things that help people who are celebrating their Act Two. Yes, our Act Two. Dr. Liz, good to see you again. I just yeah, uh, actually am still kind of getting over um, a, a flu like unknown flu symptoms. And uh, the doctor, uh, when I was describing the symptoms to him, um, I was telling him I had this malaise, you know, it, it affects your head. It wasn't a cold. Hmm. It was a different yes. kind of uh, head no. situation. He said, yes, brain fog. And, and I thought to myself, that's a great name, brain fog, because that's what it was. I wasn't dizzy. I wasn't falling down. But And I, I realized at that moment, this is a common symptom, at least for my wife. Uh, she's gone through that with menopause. You know, there are days when you're just, you, you don't really, you're not there. You're not all there. I, I, brain fog yes. is a great suggestion. So how does that relate to menopause? Very common. It's so common in menopause. As women go into menopause, they're doing the perimenopause hormone changes uh, and then the decline in hormone levels as they go into menopause. It's a very common symptom to experience ah. and describe it exactly how you described it so obviously it's not only for women but it's very very common with the sudden decline right so for men we've talked about the hormone declines are more gradual but for women it's a pretty sudden transition over the course of a year a couple of years usually and they'll experience that what you're describing like a cloudy headed feeling yes, a little bit of yes. forgetfulness yeah. right women get very concerned am i developing dementia answer is no. All right. Most women, all women will go into menopause, but the vast majority will not develop dementia, luckily. However, when we get that cloudy headed feeling, that forgetfulness, uh, hard to finish the sentence, what was that word I was looking for? Harder, yeah. longer time to recall a name of somebody. Yeah. Okay. So all of these can be very concerning, but are they have a hormonal influence, of course, since that's the biggest thing that's changing. Uh, but it can be also due to uh, disrupted sleep, which we've talked about that. We've talked about the hormonal disruptions related to disrupted sleep. And that affects cognition. That affects your brain sharpness, uh, as well as uh, working too much or stress. Again, we've talked about how that uh, can disrupt sleep. And that's critically important to our brain sharpness, okay? So super common brain fog, not a sign that dementia is coming, not at all. But is there any kind of thera therapeutic uh, thing that, uh, whether, whether you're in uh, menopause and you're experiencing brain fog or uh, where John uh, uh, found himself because of this recent illness that he had, are the things that you can do that would help uh, alleviate it or eliminate it like a supplement of some kind, uh, um, increasing activated charcoal in your system. I, I mean, I don't know. Uh, are there things you can do to help alleviate that? Sure, absolutely. There are many, many things that we can do. Uh, so I, okay, there are many supplements because of the way the system works in the United States. We don't necessarily have fantastic data to show the supplement versus that one, okay? However, we do know very clearly three hormones, three major hormones that impact cognition and brain function, thyroid in both men and women, testosterone in both men and women, uh, and also estrogen, uh, especially in women, all right? The sudden loss of estrogen is really what has the biggest impact on brain fog and the increased incidence of brain fog happening uh, to women as they go through into this phase of life, all right? So all of those hormones are very important and they're easy to check. They're easy to check, they're easy to replenish if necessary. We've talked on a number of occasions of those specific uh, connections and things that people can do, all right? Lots of data out there supporting different nutritional supplements. Uh, it's a little hard to know, uh, it, it, that's tough. It's just, it's just a tough, um, arena that's out there uh, in terms of supplements. Uh, however, there's no question that there are some ingredients that are out there 
So if people notice differences, uh, for example, if their brain is more fuzzy uh, after eating uh, wheat or gluten products or dairy or other nutritional ingredients, those are very important to pay attention to. Those are real. Those connections are definitely real and part of the whole picture uh, of brain fog. Okay. Mm. Well, this is, this is important stuff, I think. Um, and of course, if you're in menopause or, or you're close to menopause, you really ought to be in touch with your doctor anyway and right. uh, helping you work through these things. That's right. That's absolutely right. We know that we've talked about this. We know that hormone replenishment helps, improves the blood flow to the brain, which of course is going to help in a lot of these areas. And the last comment that I definitely want to leave our listeners with is that you cannot outrun your lifestyle choices. Uh, the foods that you eat, if you're eating the SAD, the standard American diet, uh, that's not going to help. Don't smoke. Uh, try to avoid head injury. I know some people enjoy participating in sports uh, where they can be at risk of head injury, but again, we want to avoid that as we get older. Uh, social engagement definitely helps keeping our brain sharp. And of course, never to be forgotten, protecting our sleep and getting good quality sleep. Very, very important so that we can have a, uh, instead of a foggy brain, we can have a nice clear head. You know, I think one of the one of the things that I appreciate most about uh, the information that you share with our audience is that uh, and we've discussed this and you don't need the three of us to tell you that you need to be your own best advocate. So when when stuff is going wrong and let's say you've been with a, uh, a family doctor that for, for years and years and years and everything's been fine, but they may just not be aware enough of things that affect you, let's say in this case in men menopause. Um, Bring it up and say, can you test me for this? Can you test me for that? I'm not yeah. sure what's going on. And if they won't do it, then reach out to Dr. Liz, uh, uh, who has a, a practice that you can reach her online, or some of the specialists in your local area who can at least do some investigation because there are a lot of uh, lab tests and things that yeah. you can do to help zone in on this thing. And even though you may still not be able to do everything that you were doing when you were 30 in the same way, at least you don't have to decline as much. And the, and the more you know, the, the more likely you are to feel better because you've got control of a plan for your life. Good, good point. Dr. Yes, Liz, love it. as always, love this information. Very helpful. Thank you. You are so welcome. Thank you. For more on Celebrating Act Two, visit our webpage, follow us on Facebook, subscribe to us on YouTube, and tell your friends. Celebrating Act Two is the user manual for the second half of your life.